This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol. And men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Oh, it's so hot, I feel too tired to get up. I've never known it like this on Earth before. Marla, will you ask the Moon Observatory to look at the sun and see if there are any unusual explosions on it? If so, it might be causing this heat wave. I will do so with alacrity, Colonel. Rayburn isn't going to like this. This is Moon Observatory calling Space Headquarters, Earth. What's the news? There are no unusual explosions on the sun. The heat on Earth comes from something or someone else. I don't like the sound of this. I'll send Dart into space to investigate. Marla? Yes, Colonel? Tell Dart and his crew to go into the upper atmosphere with a probe machine. <laughs> Why, Gabbler, I didn't know you liked reading. I hate reading. Then why are you doing it? I want to be clever. Clever, 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 clever. Who's ever heard of a clever bird brain? Will Captain Larry Dart and his crew prepare for takeoff? Where are we going? To the upper atmosphere. Take a probe machine and see if there is any change in the air around Earth. Husky, find Slim and tell him we're leaving. It's like an oven in here. Even the air conditioning's broken down. Has Dart left yet? He is preparing to do so. Orbital speed zero to 20,000 miles an hour. Speed maintained. Astro beam working. Check. Scanner viewer working. Check. Gamma rays on. Yoba rays on. All in order, Captain. Galosphere 347 is cleared for takeoff. Thank you, Marla. Takeoff program starting now. May I be permitted to use the probe machine? If you want to. How does it work? If there's a large amount of radioactive particles in the atmosphere, the machine starts clicking. But if the particles are electrically charged, it buzzes. What has all that got to do with a heat wave? I don't know. I'm just doing what I'm told. I am ready, Captain. Open the outer vacuum door. like to explore further. What a strange sound. What's wrong, Slim? The machine is making a whistling noise. You must have found a different type of particle. I'll tell Earth. Good. I will wait out here. Gallosphere 347 calling space headquarters. We're getting a whistling noise on the probe machine, and we don't know what it means. Come back, and I'll give you a different instrument. Very well. Bring back the sample Slim's already collected. Then Professor Haggerty can start analyzing it. A whistling noise, eh? Hmm, most interesting. We're going down for the new machine. Here is what I have already collected. I will remain in space until you return. Why do you want to stay here? I am obtaining profoundly interesting experimental data. What does that mean? Merely that he's enjoying himself. Change to primary drive, Husky. We're going in to land. Let me help you. I'm so clever, I 
can do anything. Oh, do be quiet. Now, where's an empty test tube? Hmm. It looks like sugar. Delicious. Leave that alone. I only tasted a bit of it. Well, go away. You can't help me. with the heat and these lights flickering, it's impossible to work. It's the Colonel. Dart's on his way to see you with a sample of particles. Good. Let me know when you've any news. Hello, Larry. This is for you, Professor. Just what I've been waiting for. Look, those particles have formed a lump on that disk. Most interesting. This is the electromagnetic machine I was going to give you, but now there's no need. Why? Because I know what those whistling particles are. You do? Yes. They're electromagnetic and very powerfully magnetized, too. Could they cause the heat wave? Yes. Look at this diagram. It'll show you what I mean. The atmosphere around Earth acts like a blanket and prevents too many harmful rays getting through to us. Now, the electromagnetic particles are attracting some of the atmosphere towards them, and that means the blanket is getting thinner. So more heat can get through? Exactly. Where have these particles come from? I'm a scientist, not a fortune teller. I'm sure the planet Neptune is at the bottom of all this. Marla, what's wrong with the electricity? It is due to the magnetized particles. They are affecting all electricity supplies. Mm, it's getting worse. If you don't mind, sir, now that we know what's causing the heat wave, I'd like to go up and collect Slim. Very well. Marla, I want to speak to Tyro, the leader of Neptune. I will put in a sonar beam call. Now we're completely in the dark. What a nuisance. It's lucky our radios work on transistors and batteries. Will you require an electronic translator? when you talk to Tyro? No, thanks. Neptunians are telepathic and can make themselves understood in any language. I will call Neptune now. <laughs> Good day, Colonel. How do you like your heat wave? So you are responsible for it. Of course. And you will soon be getting hotter. Are you trying to kill us? No. I only wish to make you so you will do as I want. What do you want? More slaves. As you know, Neptunians hate work. We've sent robots to help you. We prefer Earthmen. If you do not give us what we want, we will make life unbearable for you. Then do so. But we're not giving in. How many of our spacecraft are hovering around Earth? Sixty? Tell them to release more magnetic particles. Within a few days, the Earthmen will be so hot, they will have to give in. If only there was some way I could fight Tyro. Is Dart back yet? Telosphere 347 has not yet taken off. Put me through to him, please. We're unable to take off, Colonel. Without electricity, we can't get the boost we need. Are all the galospheres affected in the same way? Yes. Everything that needs electricity is broken down. This is terrible. Contact Slim and tell him what's happened. It is exhilarating to be weightless. Captain Larry Dart calling Slim. Can you hear me? Yes, Captain. Are you on your way to collect me? We can't take off. 
Our electricity supplies have failed. That is calamitous. I only have enough oxygen for eight hours. We'll do everything we can to save you. This heat. Another six hours and Slim will die. Don't keep reminding me. A fleet of Neptunian ships are orbiting Earth. They must have released more magnetic particles. They have. That's why it's hotter. If only we could go after them. We can't. Without electricity, even our missiles won't lift. We're helpless. <laughs> of oxygen left, and then I will die. If only I could see my beautiful planet Venus again. There must be some way of lifting a galosphere without an electrical boost. There isn't. You know that. I know, I know. But if I don't say I know, I'm encouraging myself to find an idea. Where have you been all this time? Improving my education. I'm now the cleverest Martian parrot in the universe. Oh, do be quiet. There's no need to lose your temper. You'd lose your temper, too, if you had to work by candlelight. It's impossible. There was no electricity when the steam engine was invented. If you'd been alive then, James Watt needn't have bothered with steam at all. He'd have had plenty of hot air from you. Hot air is very useful. The first men to fly from Earth used hot air to propel themselves into the sky. I'm not interested in the past. I'm only interested in what I can do. And I, I, I've got it. Got what? An idea. And you gave it to me. You're the most clever, brilliant, intelligent, educated bird in the world. I'm beautiful, too. Cassie, tell Rayburn I'm coming to see him. I told everyone I was clever, but nobody believed me. <laughs> if only I knew what I said. You mean the gabbler helped you? Yes. He was telling me that men flew into space long before we invented galaspheres, and that gave me the idea. Why don't we use an old-fashioned space rocket, the kind that takes off with rocket fuel? We haven't got any of those obsolete things. There are some in the Aeronautics Museum. Marla, tell the museum I want one of their ancient spacecraft. Ask for a 1980 rocket. Shall I request the presence of Larry Dodd? Yes. Beats me how you understand what she says. I don't, but when you're working with a woman, it saves a lot of bother if you always agree with her. So you want to use a 1980 rocket? Yes. Do you think it'll go? Everything in this museum is looked after most carefully. The rocket you asked for is out on the landing field. Ah, Dart. Ever seen one of these? Only in a book. Fancy going up in it? You mean it works? Yes. But I'm willing to go. This rocket hasn't got any gravity repulsion. You must lift more slowly and you will feel extremely uncomfortable. I don't care. Slim's only got two hours oxygen left, and I must save him. I hope you don't meet a Neptunian ship on the way. <laughs> they know our galaspheres and missiles can't lift, and they might think this is a new invention. Colonel, that's our chance. Can this rocket be equipped with a laser gun? Yes. Then put one in. As soon as I found Slim, I'll go after a Neptunian ship. If I can destroy it, Tyro might think we really have got a new space missile. <laughs> Rocket fuel is dangerous, isn't it? Yes. Quite a few rockets use to explode before they reach space. And the sooner you fire this one, the better. Waiting makes me nervous. I'm as scared as a leprechaun in the sunlight. So am I. Well, everything's ready. Give the order to ignite the fuel. This is it, Professor. It's lifting. It isn't gaining height. It'll fall back. No, it isn't. It's still going up. Oh, the pressure is agony. I can't stand much more of it.
I hope Dodd is all right. So do I. Oh, what a relief that's over. Captain Larry Dodd here. How am I doing? You're on course and doing fine. The moment you sight Slim, let us know. Very well. Ouch! I'd forgotten there was no false gravity in these ships. Thirty minutes of oxygen left, and then it will be all over. Porthole so small, I'll never be able to find Slim. Don't worry. Just follow our instructions. The rocket is approaching the spaceman. Switch off main motors. Main motors off. Boost left thrust. Left thrust boosted. Can you sight Slim yet? Not a sign of him. The only... Wait! I can see him! Lack of oxygen must be giving me hallucinations. It looks like an ancient rocket ship approaching. What do I do now? Steer the ship manually in direction of object. No, that's the wrong way. That's better. It's Larry here. Are you all right, Slim? Then I am not dreaming. Yes, Captain, I am all right. Their suspense is killing me. What's happening, Dart? Slim's entering the vacuum chamber now. It is most uncomfortable in here. The sooner we return to Earth, the better. I've got a job to do first. We have a laser gun aboard, and I want to go after a Neptunian craft. That is a suggestion of nonsensical import. This rocket can never attain sufficient speed to catch one. The Neptunians will never have seen anything like this rocket before. They're curious creatures, and I'm hoping they'll come close and look at it. You are right. I can see a Neptunian ship now. Shall I fire the gun? We are too far away. Wait. My lord, Tyro, one of our ships has seen a strange object flying above Earth. It cannot be a galosphere or a missile because they need electricity to work. What can it be? Tell our ship to go close and look at it. Are the Neptunians coming nearer? Yes. Fire, Captain. A direct hit. Good. Let's see if we can find another one. Another ship is coming towards us. They're certainly curious. ships are moving away from us. This is a disaster. Two of our ships have been destroyed. The Earthmen must have invented a machine that does not need electricity. We'd better return to Earth. Larry Dart calling Earth. I'm coming in to land. Take it slowly, Dart. You're not in a galosphere now. You don't need to remind me of that.
So you're back, Larry. Congratulations. Dart's got some interesting news, Professor. Each time we blew up a Neptunian ship, a lot of dust seemed to rush towards the center of the explosion. That's because the Neptunian ships were controlling the magnetic particles. And each time a ship was destroyed, the particles close to it were attracted back. If we could destroy all the Neptunian ships, the magnetic barrier would disappear. Exactly. And our atmosphere would return to normal. Marla, call the museum and see how many ancient rockets they have. Before I do that, perhaps you will speak to Taro. He is on the sonar beam. Put him on. You have destroyed two of my ships. What is this new invention you are using? New invention? Yes, a rocket that can lift into space without electricity. <laughs> You're behind the times, Tyro. That isn't new. We invented it 150 years ago. Then Earthmen are not so stupid after all. I keep telling you that. Now I'll give you until tomorrow to remove the magnetic particles around Earth. If you don't, we'll destroy all your craft. I will remove them immediately. You made up your mind quickly. Neptunians do not need time to think. You have beaten us this time, but one day it will be our turn to win. Well, Professor, by tomorrow, things should be back to normal. I have contacted the museum, but I regret there is only one 1980 rocket available. Seems to me you'd better order some more to be made. I certainly will. <laughs> uh, looks as though the old-fashioned things are best after all. <laughs> <laughs>